Let's take another one. Again, we can keep the NP and the VP here because these are not going to change. Let's take a similar but actually an even more hilarious example. Um, the student wrote his thesis on acid. Now you might hear that and think, whoa, what, what are the meanings there? There's actually two possible meanings. So uh, one possible meaning here is that um, you wrote your thesis and it just happened to be about the topic of acid. I don't know, biologists do this all the time. There's another possible meaning here, and hopefully this is not the thing that you would ever do, um, the idea that you were under the influence of acid when you were writing your thesis. So we can similarly structurally disambiguate those possible meanings by drawing two different tree structures here. So let's go ahead and do that. And again, you might want to pause this video and see if you can do that on your own right now. So the sentence is, the student wrote his thesis on acid. Pretty crazy. Don't ever do that, by the way, if we're talking about the second meaning. But let's talk about the first meaning here, where the subject of his thesis was acid. So let's take the noun phrase here. We have the student. It's a noun phrase. It starts with the determiner, the. Oops. And then we have the noun, student. And then we have wrote. Oh, OK, we've arrived at the verb. So that and everything after it, part of the verb phrase. Then we have his thesis. What kind of phrase is that? That's a noun phrase. So we have the determiner or possessive pronoun, his, and then we have the noun, thesis. And then we have on acid. And you'll see, similar to the last example, this is where the ambiguity arises in the sentence. So let's uh, call this a prepositional phrase and we'll see where it connects in a moment. But we have the preposition, on, and then we have a noun. But remember, a noun phrase can be one word. So we always, at the higher levels, must represent the phrasal structure first, that it's a noun phrase. Then we represent the lexical category. So two possible meanings. Again, we're tackling the first of these, the idea that the student wrote his thesis and the topic of that thesis was acid. Well, OK. So the, uh, if, if we're doing that, um, then the connection is here. Or actually, I should say it is here. Because we're describing something about the thesis itself that the topic of this thesis is acid, amino acids, whatever it may be. So we're describing a quality of thesis. But remember, there's a second possible meaning to this sentence, which is the idea that this poor student did something very irresponsible and chose to write his entire thesis while under the influence of acid. Well, now we're doing something a little bit different. So now we would actually be making the connection up here. Why, you may ask? Well, on that meaning, that he was under the influence of acid when he wrote his thesis, we're saying something about how he wrote his thesis. Sloppily, a lot of crazy, whacked out ideas. After all, he's on acid. So because of that, we have to connect it to a different node, the entire verb phrase here. So it has domination over everything below it. Whereas on the other meaning, where his uh, thesis was about acid, then we can just connect it to this node here because we're only describing the thesis, not how he wrote it. So those are two really classic examples of ambiguous utterances in English that you can structurally disambiguate by drawing tree structures in English. Now, sometimes you also get what are called garden path sentences. Garden path sentences are um, maybe utterances that you hear that you are misled into one interpretation, and it was actually another interpretation. So a good example of this is the sentence, the old man boats. The old man boats. I mean, it even sounds weird. You're not quite sure how to interpret it, right? But there's two possible meanings, at least, to this utterance. But let's take the most apparent two. So the first of these is the idea that uh, the old man as one person, that is, we're taking this as a constituent, the old man boats, you know, like an activity on a beautiful sunny day. 
The other possibility, however, is that it uh, is the old as a group of people that boat. In which case, that as a group of people would be the constituent and man here is the verb, boats. So we can draw tree structures for both of these. So let's take that first example where this is the constituent, the old man, just one person and boats is the verb. Again, we have a noun phrase, we have to because that's how they start out in English, that's what our phrase structure rules tell us. So we have the determiner, the, then we have the adjective, old, and then we have the noun, man, and then over here we have a verb phrase consisting quite simply of the verb, boats. So that's one possible meaning of this garden path sentence, but there is another totally different structural representation to represent the other possible meaning. So if we were taking instead this as the constituents, the old as a collection of a group of people as one meaning, and man here is the verb, we've got to draw this as a different tree structure. So still pretty similar kind of noun phrase here. We have the determiner, the, but now we have old. Now old is almost always in English used as an adjective, but here we have an example of it being used as a noun. And then we have man, and if that's the verb, we know it must be part of the verb phrase and everything after it is too. And then we have boats. So boats, it's a noun, we know that, but remember, we have to first indicate the phrasal level and then the noun boats. The old man boats. You probably never heard that utterance before, but now you can understand both of its possible meanings and more importantly for the purposes of this video, hopefully you understand how to represent those two possible meanings drawing two different tree structures. So um, that's pretty much it. I, I hope you learned something from this video. I hope it was useful. Um, let us know if you have any questions. In the meantime, I'll see you soon. Thanks.